Okay, well this isn't exactly an organized, um, like, episode, but, um, yeah, we're gonna talk about games. For, first off, we're gonna talk some more about the games I got at Con Bravo. I know I talked about them in the other video, but, uh, I'm gonna talk about them a little more. Starting off with, uh, Spider-Man Venom Maximum Carnage on the Genesis, uh, admittedly this didn't really live to the hype, I feel, um, like, because for one thing, I know this might piss somebody off, but I honestly think this game is too hard to be fun. It, it really is too fucking hard to be fun. It's like, you know, it's pretty long, for one thing, and, you know, you're only given one continue, and even though you might be able to get more continues with more points, it's still really hard. I can't fucking get far in it at all. And, you know, I even, like, just for shits and giggles, you know, put in a game genie and, you know, put in an infinite lives code just to see how far I could get. Well, I could get far, you know, because it's infinite lives, and I played it for a while, I didn't beat it, but I was like, yeah, I don't see how the fuck I could beat this. You know, even with practice and everything, it just doesn't seem like it would be, you know, that rewarding. It's not even two players, which, you know, I'm not trying to harp on the game too much for not being two players, but, you know, if it was two players, maybe it could have been a little easier. You know, there should have been some more continues. You know, because this game I was really hyped up for, because it's like, you know, yeah, I finally have fucking maximum carnage it's a beat em up you know it's another genesis game i really need more beat em ups and genesis games in my collection but honestly i don't know i it was pretty disappointing you know because of again it's just too hard to be fun really and like you know there's many other games that i've played that just feel more rewarding and just feel more fair like one example that comes to mind, fuck it because it's a beat em up and bring it up. Batman Returns on Super Nintendo. This is definitely a much more fair and enjoyable game than Maximum Carnage, I feel. You know, because even though I have not beaten Batman Returns, I feel there's a better chance because, well, I just think it's better designed. Um, this game is obviously, you know, like, like praised and stuff because it's like, you know, it's an LJN published game. Yes, it is published by LJN. And, they, and you know, everybody says, oh, this is the best LJN game ever. Or one of the only good published LJN games. I don't know. It's just too fucking hard to be fun, in all honesty. Which is one of the reasons why I consider the sequel Spider-Man Venom Separation Anxiety better. Because, well, it's said not to be as hard. And it's got two players. So, that'll probably heal the wounds from this. I mean, it, it's still nice to have. I'm so glad I own it, but... <sighs> Championship pool for the Super Nintendo. Well, it's pool, and honestly, I think my biggest gripe with it are the modes. Are, like, for one thing, there's this, like, free play mode, and, you know, by the time you hit all the balls into the, um, in the holes, nothing happens at all. And there's, like, this, you know, competition mode, which I haven't gone too far in. It plays fine, you know. I don't think it's bad, per se. Um, this is also on the Sega Genesis and the NES, so, uh... Yeah, but I got it on Super Nintendo, five bucks. It's not bad, I guess. On the Ball is actually pretty cool. Um, what this is, it's basically like, you're controlling this maze, you know, to get this ball into the exit. Um... You're kind of like twisting and turning it, kind of like with a Sonic 4 special stages. Um, it's actually really fun. In fact, it's even more fun than Sonic 4. Uh, you know, there's like four sections, right? There's like four sections of levels that you do. And then after you beat those four sections, then comes another four sections. And then you beat those four sections, and you get a final four sections. You get a password in between you know, the four the four sections, so that's how I'm going to probably beat this, because I don't know if I really want to marathon it. But, you know, hey, that's what the password's there for. Honestly, for the price it is, you know, you know, I paid 12 bucks, you could probably pay that, or even less. I'm not sure how much it costs, you know, to get complete in box, but, like, I definitely recommend this. This is probably a hidden gem for the Super Nintendo, and just an enjoyable game overall. MTV Remote Control. Honestly, I think what I said about in the con this game in the Con Bravo video is good enough. But basically, to recap, well, it's, you know, a quiz game. I would like to play this with a friend sometime, but, you know, hey, friends are busy. Probably won't be seeing many of them, which sucks, you know. 
Uh, I mean, this summer was kind of disappointing because they weren't around, and you know, it doesn't look like they're going to be around for any time soon, if ever. So yeah, that's going to kind of suck. But um, whatever. Anyways, uh, let's not get gloom and doom and stuff. It's all right. You know, it's quiz stuff, and really, it's more so a curiosity piece and. You know, something I'll play with a friend every now and then, or we'll do a watch us play on. But it's interesting and kind of cool to have. Rock and Ball. I had mentioned in my Con Bravo video that I picked this up because of um, the cover art. And if you look at the cover art, you know, basically what I said about it is that it looks like very Famicom-esque. It looks like the cover you'd see to a Famicom game. Or be a Japanese version of a cover art of a potential game, potentially worldwide released game. Uh, but what it is, is it kind of, kind of sort of reminds me of Flipnik Ultimate Pinball for the PS2. In the sense that it's pinball, but it's got some, you know, extra modes with multiplayer and stuff. So in a way, it's kind of like a very, like juniorized version of Flipnik Ultimate Pinball, though not nowhere near as good, but still actually pretty fun. A nice little, you know, just a cheap, nice, subtle, enjoyable time. And yeah, I'd probably recommend it. You know, two players and stuff. I got this for like eight bucks at the convention. I like it. Racket Attack, also for the NES. Um, I wanted this because, um, well, I liked the music. If you look up a gameplay video of this and listen to the music, it's you know, simple, but something about the music is just kick ass. Um, it's also by Jalico, you know, and it's one of the few NES Jalico games that actually says the name of the game on the end label. It doesn't say fucking Jalico on the end label, which is nice. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's tennis. It did take a bit of a second to get used to, but I, after playing for a while, I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's definitely better than, you know, top players tennis on the NES, and I'd say it's even better than black box tennis for the NES. Um, just a nice, fun little time tennis game with some really frickin' good music, I will say that. Um, try it out, actually. You might like it. Sega Genesis Collection of the PSP. I had mentioned in the Con Bravo video that I mainly wanted this because I, you know, it's a Sonic game for the PSP that isn't Sonic Rivals 1 or 2. And, um... Yeah, so I got it. I played a little bit of it. Um, it's also nice because I wanted it for Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi. I mean, and I played that, and, well, Shadow Dancer is kind of very reminiscent of, like, the original Shinobi, although I think it's better than the original Shinobi, but not in the same, but it's not in the vein of, you know, like, Revenge of Shinobi or Shinobi 3 or even the Game Gear Shinobi games. Um, there's also Virtual Fighter 2, a port for the Genesis. It's kind of ass, to be honest, but, hey, that was fun to play. Um, uh, it also, it's also got Echo Jr., which I don't have much to say about it, that, uh, but it's cool to have, it's Sonic, because, you know, it's got Sonic 1 and 2, it doesn't have Spinball, 3D Blast, Sonic and Knuckles, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, or, you know, Wacky World's Creativity Studio, but it's a pretty nice release, and, you know, hey, play Sonic 1 and 2 on your PSP, you know, unfortunately, some people like to say that, oh, Sonic was never good, or, oh, even the Genesis games were shit, and I'm like, yeah, nice, you and your fucking closed-minded thoughts, Jesus Christ. Those fucking people. Okay, enough enough about that, but yeah. yeah a little cool thing to own. Child of Eden. I got this because um, one of the guys at the vendor actually said I should get this. You know, he saw me looking at this, and you know, I heard little about it. I remember uh, Pete Dorr talked about this, and um, you know, how it was like, I believe it's like somewhat kind of like in the vein of like Rez, you know, that game Rez. Um, I played it for a little bit, and I'm liking it, you know, you're just basically going around, like, I think, like, neutralizing or just shooting stuff down. Um, but it was really nice, the visuals are incredible, you know, very trippy and just gorgeous to look at. Um, yeah, uh, though I'm gonna probably play it, um, <clears throat> I'll probably play it some more, uh, another time, though, cause, uh, you know, playing other games. And now we've got Soul Calibur 2. I uh, th sorry. Soul Calibur 3 for the PlayStation 2. Um now I'd wanted this because, you know, I'm a big fan of this game, one of my favorite games of all time, Soul Calibur 2 on GameCube. And this, I will say, is probably just as good as 2. Um 
Yeah, I like this quite a bit actually. Um, the graphics are well, amazing for PS2. I and just amazing overall. I think this holds up very well graphically. It's fucking gorgeous. You know, the combat and just fighting action overall is still just as good as two. It adds, you know, that mode Tales of Souls. Um, you know, where you play through some stories and you can you know, like select how the story kind of ends out. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's there. There's a character um, creation. You know, the new characters are nice. This is just overall fantastic game. You know, even you don't even have to be like into Soul Calibur to enjoy this. Even if you're into fighting games in the slightest, absolutely would I recommend this. Of course, with you know, two as well. But yeah, this is probably also one of my favorite games of all time now too. You know, these two games, man. But yeah, Soul Calibur three, very nice to have. Alright, um, okay, uh, this is where it gets, yeah, you know, let's talk about some, uh, Atari 2600 games. We have Sprint Master, um, this was a, a late release for the 2600, if it'll last, uh, yeah, there you go, as you can see it came out, it came out in, uh, 1988, uh, so that's like, you know, that's like after fucking... That's like the same year Super Mario Bros. 2 came out here. And, you know, that's like one year or uh, before the Game Boy came out. Um, but anyways, uh, this is a racing game and a pretty ambitious one for the 2600. You know, you can select your course. Um, there's like two different modes and stuff. Um, and it doesn't surprise me how ambitious it really is. Because, you know, again, late release. If you can, um, Even if you don't look at the year, you can tell it's a late release because it comes in a red you know, a red label. Um, though unfortunately the controls are kind of, ugh, like, it's kind of annoying. I mean, honestly, with this kind of top-down view game, I guess that's to be expected. The controls don't help, but I wouldn't consider it horrible. It's actually kind of amusing, but it's probably not the best racing game for the 2600. Ugh. <sighs> Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. Now, um, as we know, this is a very infamous uh, game. The port, or rather the port, is very infamous. Um, <clears throat> now, like, this was not the sole contributor, but this, along with E.T., and I'm sure, like, the Atari porn games, were essentially, you know, contributors to, like, the video game crash in 1983, because, you know, with this port, everyone is hyped up, it's like, yeah, get to play Pac-Man on my 2600, Then they find out it's, you know, sucks, like, uh, do I really need to describe how, that, why it sucks? One thing I want to say that, you know, I'm not sure too many people say, but really just playing this, especially, like, compared to not just Pac-Man, the arcade game, but Miss Pac-Man on the 2600, it doesn't even have that same, you know, energy or good, like, you know, AI and the ghost. It's like, this was even worse than I thought. Like, holy shit, this is bad. Like, you know, even with that one person who might say, oh, it's not that bad. Really, playing it after playing it for myself, I can say it really is that bad. Especially compared to even just, like, Miss Pac-Man on the 2600 or even, like, Potential Pac-Man clones on the 2600, like, you know, Alien is a bit of a Pac-Man clone for the system. Uh, oh boy, this, this game is a fucking mess. But, hey, it's, it's nice to have. We got Motorstorm Pacific Rift on the PlayStation 3. I wanted to get this because I... <clears throat> I remember a few years ago I played a demo of this. Uh... I played a demo of this game, and I liked it. I liked it actually more than the first Motor Storm, which came with my PS3. My fat PS3, now I have the slim PS3, uh, which I have over there. And I played it, and yeah, it's still better. It's just as good as I remembered. I loved the racing action and just overall energy of this game a lot more than the first one. And one thing that helps is that it's multiplayer. So right there, if it'll load, or if it'll focus. I'll hit this one, I want it to focus. 
Okay, yeah, there it says, you know, four-player split screen. Ah, there we go. Um, that's what really convinced me to uh, get this was, you know, memories from the demo, the four-player, and just, you know, hey, let's get another MotorStorm game. Yeah. In fact, my dad quite liked um, the first one. That was one of the only games he ever played was uh, the first MotorStorm. So it's like, you know, this is nice. To, it wasn't a good idea to get over Um, now we have, uh, Tetris Worlds on the GameCube. Now, um, I wanted a te I wanted this because I kind of wanted a Tetris game on a console, you know, so I could do multiplayer. Um, you know, because it says, it says there, you know, up to four players can compete. And out of all the versions of Tetris I have, I couldn't play any of them multiplayer. Because, you know, I don't have a link cable, or they're just not multiplayer. So, that kind of shocked game itself is, uh, well, Tetris. I didn't, re from what I looked, it didn't really get very good reviews, so, um, you know, that kind of warned me, but I played it for a little bit, and it doesn't seem too bad. You know, it seems fair, probably not the best version of Tetris, I think. Perhaps the next Tetris on the Dreamcast and the N64 probably would have been superior. Or not, but hey, considering the price it was, it, you know, it's nice to get. And uh, the last game I'll talk about for this video will be Suzuki All-Star Extreme Racing on the Dreamcast. Um, I wanted to get this because I looked up gameplay, and you know, even if I didn't look up gameplay, the two screenshots here look nice. And because uh, you know, this like game surprised me with its game, with its you know sense of speed. It looked, it like looked like a badass kind of game. I mean, even though, like. Even though it's only two players, or... Yeah, it's only two players. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's only two players. Um, and like... So yeah, I bought it. Got it for a decent price. You know, 14 bucks. Um, well, it's not bad. Uh, but I do have some problems with it. For one, the collision detection is a little sensitive. Like, even... The littlest things will kind of send you flying, and I get that's probably supposed to be realistic, because, yes, this game does have a very fast pace to it. In fact, that's the thing that attracted to me. But that kind of fucks you over in the long run, especially some later courses just aren't as well designed as previous courses, I feel. Um, I still liked it, you know, but uh, didn't live up to the hype entirely, but, uh, you know, hey, there's worse schemes. But, you know, Surf Rocket Racers on the Dreamcast, it's better than this. That game surprised the fuck out of me, that game is so good. Um, but, yeah, Suzuki All-Star Extreme Racing, uh, not bad, but it could have been better.